Hi, I'm A.L. Tate and I'm going to be reading today the first chapter from the Adaban Cipher, Book 1. Chapter 1. Gabe stared in horror at the small book in his hand. The light from the low fire danced across its golden cover, setting off a shower of sparkles from the rainbow of jewels that adorned it. Its beauty was dulled only in one corner, stained by a dark, spreading smudge. Take it to... Gabe bent closer to Brother Benedict, trying to hear the elderly monk's gasped instructions. Aidens, Benedict wheezed, his eyes closed and his voice a faint whisper. Hide it. They must not have it. Aiden? Gabe repeated, unsure of what he'd heard, alarmed by the old man's pale, clammy face, and even worse, the blood seeping into Brother Benedict's beetling grey eyebrows. Did you say Aiden? Who did this to you? I need to get you some help. Brother Benedict seemed to gather all his strength, lifting his head as he grabbed for Gabe's hand, smearing his skin with the same blood that darkened the book's cover. Tell no one, the old man said, and there was no hesitation in his fierce whisper, though his eyes were now watery beneath fluttering eyelids. What lies within must be safe. Benedict sank back to the stone floor, and Gabe had to lean in closely to hear his friend's last rushed words. Find Aidens on the side. Gabe paused, waiting in case there was more, but Brother Benedict was still and the silence around them was complete. Shoving the book deep into the pocket of his robe, Gabe grabbed the thin blanket that had been carelessly tossed to the floor beside the bed, throwing it over his friend. His season in the infirmary had taught him that a sick man needed to stay warm, though he wasn't entirely sure if a gaping head wound constituted sickness. He stood, wondering what to do. Surely Brother Benedict didn't really mean for Gabe to leave him lying here, motionless on the floor, while Gabe went off in search of Aiden. But, Gabe thought, looking around, fists clenched at the destruction, he couldn't stay here either. The tiny circular chamber, usually scrupulously tidy, was a mess, with Brother Benedict's few possessions, along with his bedding and even his thin mattress, dumped on the floor. Benedict must have disturbed a search of his chamber, and the would-be thieves had beaten him as they'd made their escape, not realising that Benedict had the book on him, secreted in his robe, much as it was now hidden in Gabe's. But who would have done such a thing to Brother Benedict? Everybody loved the old man. Brother Malachy joked that Benedict had been born in the foundations of the Abbey as the great walls were being raised, and he'd never once left the premises. Gabe liked to think that's why he and Brother Benedict had such a bond. Gabe hadn't been born at the Abbey, but he'd been left on the doorstep soon after his birth, which seemed close enough. Life within the Abbey walls had always been calm, peaceful, predictable. Surely no one in the community could have done this to Brother Benedict. Gabe swallowed as he realised that he must have missed the altercation by minutes. Could he have saved the old man from harm? Or would Gabe simply be lying down there on the floor beside him? Gabe jumped when Benedict spoke again, his chest heaving with effort. Aidens, he said, on the side. They must not have it. Gabe dropped to his knees again. What, he almost shouted. Who is Aiden? But there was no more. Who are they? Gabe whispered, suddenly feeling very alone in the dim room, the book heavy in his pocket. Every part of him wanted to run from the room, screaming for help, but Gabe knew in his heart that Brother Benedict wouldn't now be bleeding on the floor were it not for this book, and he wouldn't have asked Gabe to hide it if it wasn't important. Tell no one. Gabe couldn't think now about who'd done this terrible thing. He'd do as he'd been brought up to do his whole life as a foundling in the Abbey, obey instructions. Gabe slowly got to his feet, creeping towards the still open door, feeling the weight of the book in his pocket. As he tentatively poked his head through the doorway, looking left and right, Gabe realised, for the first time, that the corridors and halls of Oldham Abbey were dark and full of shadows, hiding places. Swallowing hard, Gabe stepped into the hall and, keeping close to the walls, made his way to the night stair. Frowning, he stared down into the yawning darkness, realising that someone had doused all the crescent lights that always burned low on these stairs to light the way to matins. Placing a shaking hand on the rail, Gabe began to feel his way down the winding staircase, trying to keep his sandals from slapping against the stone. 
he could hear his breath, harsh and ragged, and tried to calm himself. If someone was waiting in the darkness to grab any unsuspecting novice that was passing, it was probably best not to alert them that Gabe was coming. A scuttling sound overhead distracted him, and Gabe froze, but there was no further noise. An eerie silence had settled over the monastery, almost as though the very stones held their breath. In the 14 years he'd been at the abbey, he couldn't remember a time it had ever been so quiet. Gabe took another step down before freezing again, listening hard, but heard nothing. He waited another moment before gathering up his robe in his free hand so that he could move more quickly down the stairs, wincing as a sharp corner of the book connected with his thigh. Did Brother Benedict really mean for him to keep it buried in his pocket? Surely it would be better to hand it to Prior Dismas. Pressing himself against the wall, Gabe continued to creep down the stairs, desperately probing the old man's words for answers. His instructions were clear, but Gabe couldn't understand them at all. It seemed strange to Gabe that the brother had chosen this one manuscript from the many he cared for within the walls of the librarium. Gabe had spent a lot of time in the librarium with the old man over the years, even before Gabe had done his one prescribed season there to learn the basics of the work, and long after Gabe had decided, two years ago, that he would devote his life to work in the scriptorium. Brother Benedict had been disappointed, but Gabe knew he wanted to copy and illustrate manuscripts, not to simply catalogue and care for them. But Brother Benedict cared for all his manuscripts with the same level of devotion. Gabe had never once seen him favour one manuscript over the others. So why this one? On top of this, he'd never heard of Brother Aidan, and he knew every monk at Oldham Abbey. On top of that, he had no idea what side Brother Benedict was talking about, and he didn't know who they were. How was he meant to hide the book from them if he didn't know who they were? Gabe felt close to tears as he wrestled with the questions, as well as with his first instinct, which was to get help for Benedict. Tell no one. Hide it. Gabe shook his head, trying to remember what Brother Archibald, head monk in the infirmarium, had told Gabe about scrambled speech. He had a bad feeling it meant the patient was going downhill fast. Gabe stopped short, once again torn between doing as he was told and doing what he wanted to do. Brother Benedict would roll his eyes at Gabe's dithering, Gabe knew. How many times must I remind you, Benedict would always say, when he caught Gabe daydreaming or drawing or dawdling in the sunshine, you do what you have to do, then you do what you want to do. But Gabe wasn't sure that fit the current circumstances. Surely a quick detour to the infirmarium wasn't going to make a difference. He wouldn't mention the book, he'd just say that Brother Benedict needed help. Feeling better now that he'd made a decision, Gabe once again began making his way down the stairs. Reaching the bottom, he bent lightly along the stone corridor, the jewelled cover of the manuscript scraping against his leg, even through the thick felted wool of his robe. His mouth went dry as he considered the possibility of being caught with the manuscript in his pocket. Would be thieves, or they aside, every manuscript in the librarian was worth a king's ransom, and the previous, the precious cover of this one must make it even more valuable. Just having it on his person was an offence, and Gabe was pretty sure that people had been hanged for less. Gabe turned right into the cloister, the wide covered walkway around the abbey's large central quadrangle, which was well lit and always busy, no matter what time of day or night. Gabe deliberately slowed his pace to match that of the hooded brothers, who seemed to glide by, their sandals making no noise, wanting to draw no attention to himself. He knew exactly what, the pri what Prior Dismas, second in charge at Oldham Abbey, would say if he caught Gabe running in the hallways. If you are to join us as a brother, you must prove you are no longer a barbarian, Prior Dismas would sniff, as he'd sniffed so many times before. Gabe frowned at the thought, wondering if the prior would ever forgive him the accident of his birth. It wasn't like foundlings were unheard of at Oldham. Brother Damon was just a few years older than Gabe, and nobody seemed to have a problem with the fact that he'd arrived in a basket as a baby. Then again, thought Gabe, suppressing a grin, Damon was so like the prior, they might be true brothers. The same small eyes, pinched mouths, and thinning blonde hair. Perhaps that's why both of them were constantly reminding Gabe that his thick brown hair needed cutting. Eyes on the ground, Gabe made his way around the cloister, cowl pulled up to hide his face. The infirmarium was in the furthest corner from the night stair, tucked away in another tower, as far from the abbey's permanent community as possible. 
The Abbey's doors were always open to the sick and the dying, but they were isolated as far as possible to keep everyone else safe. Turning left, Gabe realised he was passing the narrow hall that led to the abbot's chamber. He glanced down at it, expecting to see only darkness. The abbot had been taken ill suddenly the day before. Gabe had seen him at matins at midnight, but he hadn't appeared for Lord's, the morning mass. Prior Dismas had simply announced at breakfast that the abbot would return when he could. The long tables had buzzed with speculation about the nature of the illness, but no one had any answers and conversation had soon moved on to crops and horses and other daily matters. Now Gabe frowned, spotting a thin sliver of light about halfway down the passage. Was the abbot in his chambers? Gabe felt a surge of relief. Here was help for Benedict, and surely the abbot was the best person to take charge of the book. He and Benedict were the oldest of friends, and there was no way that the abbot could be part of the they to which Benedict had referred. Trying not to hurry, Gabe nonchalantly looked left and right before ducking quickly into the passage, flattening himself against the wall. He counted to ten before he was sure that no one had followed him, and then, keeping his back to the wall, crept along the passage towards the faint light, taking care not to knock over an enormous urn of white flowers sticking out slightly from a decorative crevice in the stonework. He was so excited at the idea of handing over the burden of responsibility, both for Benedict's condition and for the book, that he'd raised his hand to bang on the door before thinking twice. Before he could start hammering, however, the low murmur of voices reached his ears. Lowering his hand, Gabe tried to swallow his disappointment. If the abbot wasn't alone, Gabe couldn't tell him about the book. He would go back to plan A and get Brother Archibald first, then come back and tell the abbot about the book. Gabe was turning away when his sharp ears caught the name Benedict hissed through the door. He stopped, pressing one ear to the door to listen closely. If the abbot already knew about Brother Benedict, then help would already be on its way, and Gabe could creep away to the dormitory he shared with Brother Damon and four others, hiding the book until he could see the abbot in the morning. Lost to find it for Lord Dammit! Gabe blinked at the curse. He'd heard language like that before, of course, mostly during his season in the guest house, tending to the needs of the weary travellers who bedded down at the Abbey for a few days while visiting Rothwell, the walled city in the valley. Gabe could see the city from the tiny arch-shaped window in his dormitory if he stood on Damon's bed, but he'd never been there. Gabe had never been anywhere but on the high walls of the Abbey. The sea of dark green trees that stretched away from the Abbey, on either side of the road to Rothwell, encircling the walled city and then continuing all the way to the horizon, hid endless stories according to the brothers who'd ever ventured beyond the walls. No, Gabe was happy here, where he knew every stone, every cobble, every brother and every blade of grass. He felt so lucky to be able to live here and to know that it would be his home forever. He was pressing his ear back to the door when a thought popped into his head. Perhaps what he'd heard was the abbot saying, Damon. Relieved that he'd made sense of it, he concentrated on listening. Where is it? He heard a harsh voice demand before it dropped back to an indecipherable whisper. Gabe thought he heard the word, word Lord again and wondered which of the Abbey's noted patrons the speaker was referring to before heavy boots stomped towards the door. Drawing back, Gabe looked for somewhere to hide, knowing that being caught out here by the abbot, or worse, the prior, so close to the door, would be disastrous. As he ducked back towards the decorative crevice nearby, Gabe found himself wondering who the boots belonged to. No one in the abbey wore anything but sandals unless they were leaving for an extended period, undertaking a pilgrimage or heading to the King's Castle in Colchester to pay the tithe. But it wasn't the right time of year for either of those things. Grimacing in the dark as he slid behind the urn, Gabe was aware of time ticking away and Brother Benedict still upstairs, bleeding or worse. Keeping his head down, he crouched beside the flowers, their sweet, heady perfume entirely at odds with the deep-seated feeling of dread that unsettled him this night. He heard the thump of boots as they passed in the hall, not just one set, but many, but could not make out the faces of the men who strode by. It took a moment for him to realise that the men had the cowls of their velvet cloaks pulled up high to hide their features, and he shrank back even further. These men did not want to be recognised. What were they doing in the abbey? Finally, the clattering of their boots receded into the cloister, and he heard them make their way across the central courtyard. A hush fell upon the passage, and Gabe was about to crawl out of his hiding place, hoping this might be his chance to see the abbot, when the door opened once again. This time, he recognised the voice. Clean up upstairs, the prior said. 
Gabe frowned again as another voice muttered a response. This one was just too low for him to make out. Just make it disappear, the prior said, and Gabe was startled by the menace in his voice. And find that book, the prior added, as a brother, his hood pulled up over his head and face, passed silently by Gabe's hiding place. Gabe didn't dare to move. Surely the book could only be the one that was even now buried deep in his robe. Did the prior already know about Brother Benedict? If so, why hadn't he called in Brother Archibald? Gabe could hear Prior Dismas pulling the abbot's door shut, fiddling with the key that locked this inner sanctum. Then he made his way past Gabe, his head lowered as though in prayer, his sandals slapping lightly on the flagstones as he walked. Watching the thin figure retreat down the hall, Gabe shuddered. Prior Dismas had made it clear that Gabe was not one of his favourite people, seeming to go out of his way to upgrade Gabe publicly for the slightest wrongdoing. He was also very handy with the long, thin willow switch he carried tucked into the back of his belt, and Gabe had felt its sting on many occasions. Gabe counted to 50 before retracing his steps back to the cloister and making his way to the infirmarium, staying close to the stone walls, trying to stick to the shadows. He saw no one on his route and breathed a sigh of relief as he flew up the stairs to the sick room and saw the round figure of Brother Archibald bent low over his desk, a sputtering candle beside him. What is it? the brother asked before Gabe could open his mouth. Are you unwell? Gabe shook his head, the kind concern on the brother's round face nearly bringing him to tears. Brother Benedict, he gasped. Archibald simply no nodded and busied himself picking up his bag of herbs and tinctures. It took a few minutes for the brother to find everything he needed while Gabe hopped from foot to foot, waiting. But finally, they were ready. Show me, said Brother Archibald. Well, that was the end of the first chapter. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy the entire book, The Adaban Cipher, book one.